All right, welcome, generals and noobs and pros. Yeah, to another Let's Mod General Zero Hour to make the best game, most stable experience, finest gameplay, best graphics. Yeah, that's a goal of making the game better. Uh, Yesterday we dropped off at fixing CB mock this 03 textures. So I think we can uh, finalize this now. I think there are just a few more things that I would like to do. Mm, let's finish this now. Uh, let's open the night textures. Mm, this is this, 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 yeah. Night textures, okay. And yeah, what I wanted to do is, um, I want to, I want to make this, the edge a bit smaller here on this one and see how that looks. Because we did the same on the windows and there was something else, I think, uh, I think somewhere we can optimize reduce texture size here here uh, so here what we can do is we take this and this and this And select, invert, delete. Yeah. That gets rid of a few kilobytes from the fire. Yeah. Good. Let's save this. Let's see if there's anything in here. No. Here. No. And here. No. And here. No. And here. Also not. Good. All right, so this is good. And yeah, so basically I would like to revisit, I think it's, we need this. And put this here. Yeah, so basically just make the light a little bit smaller here in those windows. So yeah. So we put the shapes here. So basically we take this, this, this and this like that. Yep. And here, like that, and that, yeah, and here as well. Yeah. And here, we need to yeah, make this larger. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then this is one watch. Uh-huh. And then I think we can delete this and this. And then make a copy of Drag it a bit larger. So yeah, we just need to make it larger like this. I think that will be enough. Yeah, I think like that. Let's see how that looks. Build five. And 
uh, the same. Yeah, I've seen uh, that there were a bunch of uh, comments in the YouTube videos, a few discussions here and there. Um, you know, maybe I can address some of the points as well, but uh, it goes slowly, slowly. Uh, CB mock C. Oh, okay, it's already here. CB mock T C O three N. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe the way it looked before was better. see how it was before save builds Well, <laughs> is the new edit better or this one? I can't uh, decide. It's hard to say. Maybe, maybe what we maybe leave it like it was, but but make this here larger here on the side so that the edges are consistent. Oh, that's wrong button. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Okay, but this also means we need to change something here. But first, let's test it. Uh, take the extra time. No rush. No rush. Before I submit, I would like to have everything done and dusted so that I don't go back to the texture set or whatever I work on afterwards. I want to submit and then just be done with it. I would say we just leave it like it was originally, like we had it yesterday. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, then we don't change anything anymore. Good, then I think all this is done. We can close it, don't save. Good. And then that means we can now create the branch. Git uh, 
create branch texture minus cb mock d03 yes create branch please and now we add our textures here and then we also add this one here and this Ah, this is where here. That's a lot of stuff. This, this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically we just move these folders into the obsolete folder because we don't need that anymore. Remove alpha channel, this one, yeah. Uh, let's double check in notepad. No, that's not the correct one. Notepad plus plus, please. Yeah, it's uh, remove the alpha channel. Okay, that's proper. This looks good. Everything is beautiful. Okay, now we say fix CB mock these textures, commit and push push and prepare a pull request and this change fixes and improves civilian CB mock this textures. Okay, labels optional civilian art minor. Good. And now copy paste the garbage here. Beautiful. Change description. Okay. Great pull requests. And voila. Looks good. But, ah, by the way, maybe we can also optimize some more things. Well, we can remove the DDS here. It's no longer needed. Yeah. And she. Huh. What is this here? Okay, it's odd uh, that this file is larger, right? So this N is, the night texture is 43 kilobyte, but the NG is twice the size, even though it doesn't have an alpha channel. But I've seen this a couple of times already. Sometimes the DDS format uh, that they exported with is total bonkers. So this one has the size of a DXT5 texture with alpha channel, but it doesn't have an alpha channel. So it's some in-between format. It's really weird. Yeah. So basically, it's it's twice as large as it should be, for some reason. But okay. I suspect that they um, exported the uh, textures by hand. They probably had some tool in Photoshop, export by hand, and then yeah, sometimes they exported not quite with the right settings. Maybe they had some automation. Maybe not. Okay, so yeah, we got all the textures here. What I wanted to check is maybe one of these larger ones. Maybe there's some optimization potential left over. Mm, no. Mm, 
should also look in here. That's fine. Huh, but this is weird here. Because there is no... Uh. Oh, it's zero four. Okay. That's not part of this. Okay. Good. All right, looks looks good. Then what we can do next, we can add the YAML file. YAML. Uh, da, 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 da. Changes. We mock this zero three. I know this is boring, <laughs> but that's part of what we do here. The way this uh, YAML stuff works is basically for every change we make. So, and with every change, I mean like, like for example, in this case, one texture set is one change. So we have one model. This house CB mock this 03, it has a texture set, and I classify this as one change. And then we create one YAML file for this, which contains all the change details. And out of this uh, change definition file, we later generate the whole change log. So this means we 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 don't create the final change log like as like a final page, like for example, HTML page, and just hammer everything in there, but we generate our target change list out of these definition files, which allows us to generate different views out of the change log. So we can take this, uh, all these changes, and we can generate uh, it just a view with all civilian changes, for example, here, depending on the labels, right? You can just make a change log just with civilian changes or with a specific version number. Right now it's all 1.0, but in the future, let's say we make a version 1.01, .01, yeah, and then we just want to have a change log for just these, and we can create a view just with these changes, filter it, done, right? So, or we can generate different formats. So right now we only generate markdown change list, but we could also generate the HTML page with change log, right? Or a PDF document, maybe. Who knows, right? So it gives uh, more flexibility, and I think that's that's good. All right. So CB mock this three three fixes fixes. Actually, this also improves because we have redone the night textures. So I will label this as improvement. Uh, today is the twelfth of August, and CB mock this. That goes in here. By the way, talking about change log, I think we can generate a new change log after we merge this. It's time anyway, because it has been a couple of days since the last generation. I typically do this once a week if there have been a number of changes within a week and then it can be regenerated. All right, first we need to copy paste here like a monkey. Oh, monkey, good copy paste. Uh, it's this one you can probably. Label optimization. Mm. 
Okay, so everything is documented. Yeah. Let's uh, double check that uh, the amount of files changes actually matches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Ah, because this one, yeah. Okay, fifteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's proper. Looks good. And we can push that as well to the git repository at the yaml commit good push yeah i think um this let's uh, have one more final look that really everything is proper before we merge Good, 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 bad, but good, 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 good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. SG, SNG, beautiful. Good, then, yeah, this is all done. Actually, this will be interesting to see how this looks with the snow. Yeah. Actually, it already looks quite nice. Good, then I think that's fine. Okay, let's merge it. Merge looks good. Yeah, typically the way like a normal review process on, on a Git project should look like. You have a bunch of reviewers and they check if everything looks proper. But here with these textures, like no one is checking. Like I can, I can edit the textures. I put it here, but, but no one will verify that it's all proper. So I have to do it myself, verify myself. Yeah. I mean, I guess with artwork, it's yeah. Artwork is very subjective, right? There's no right or wrong, but with code is kind of critical to have a second eyes second pair of eyes to look over it to really see, yeah, okay, is this all proper, is this correct? Right? Because if there are errors, then yeah, that's not good to submit. But okay, with textures, yeah, it's not the critical. If, if a texture doesn't look good, it doesn't crash anything, right? It doesn't break anything. Okay, but it looks good. We can put this comment here and then we squash and merge. Mm-hmm. Okay, delete the branch, uh, go to main branch, get the latest, and then we go fetch and prune, and delete the branch, force delete, delete, yes, please. Okay, now what we can do is, as I said, we update the change log because there have been a bunch of changes to this already. Create a new branch update change log. Plural. Create. And now we just go to mod builder, which is a tool we developed to help us with building everything. So basically what we do is we have uh, the source files here in our structure. So this is uh, the root of the uh, of the project, the root directory, as is in GitHub, and then also it's a local clone. And yeah, there are a bunch of like readmes, blah, blah, setup files. And here are all the project files. Here are the JSON files are 
all the definitions, like what should we do with the files, right? So for example, uh, let's open it in Visual Studio Code. So this is the same the same view with the folder here. So here's the, the JSON file. So the way it works is, yeah, let's let's make a quick uh, tour here through mod builder definition so that you just understand like what it is, if you care. Otherwise, you just skip ahead, right? Okay, so basically we have uh, bundle packs. Bundle, let's go here first, uh, core packs, bundle core packs. So these, so, so the, the super page release in the end will have a bunch of packages inside. And uh, this is a core bundle. And core means all the core functionality, the minimum viable pro product to run on a client to be compatible with other clients. That's our core, uh, core version of super page. Right, so in there is the core audio changes, uh, any files, the, 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 the game content files, maps, uh, misc files, that's stuff, loose files, uh, like cursor files and stuff like this. Then the textures, core textures, is like affection textures that need fixing and stuff like this. Core W3D, uh, there's not much in there yet, but yeah, whenever model needs some fixes and it certainly should be in the core, uh, models can also be, they need to be in sync. So like, for example, uh, bone positions, like f f uh, that, that set where a unit is firing from, like a tank, for example, the bullet is spawning out of the, um, the muzzle, the, the, the barrel, right? Uh, there's a, like a, a bone position in the model and it needs to be in sync between all clients. So if there's like a model change with bone position changes that affect gameplay, then these need to be in sync. So of course these need to be in the core. They can't be optional, just a, a side note and core windows or any window files that yeah, definitely need to be in core and also language files. So here Arabic, we will have Brazilian. Uh, so there are the, the core languages. So core languages are nine languages, Brazilian, Chinese, English, French, German. By the way, let's make this a bit larger. Can we do this? Oh, I don't know. Oh, you have to deal with a small font here, I guess. So uh, core French, uh, uh, German language, Italian, Korean, Polish, Spanish. These are the, the nine uh, original game languages. All of these we support in super patch. So the, the language files and everything is fully supported. So we cater to all the different game languages so that every original game install can use super patch with correct language and everything. Of course, uh, likely most users will use English, right? But there are also players who use specific language if they are more comfortable with that, right? And then additionally, we also have Russian language that was a community made by Russian community. And we also have Arabic. We possibly did find some text file for the game, which does contain Arabic translations, but that's still kind of work in progress. And there's also a Ukrainian language in the works, just uh, text, not audio. Uh, but yeah, this will then also be added here, support for. And yeah, so these are the, the core packs for the uh, core bundle packs. And then there are also full bundle packs. These contain not just core, but also optional, the optional packs. So optional audio, optional textures. The, the optional textures are all these uh, civilian buildings we are fixing right now. They don't need to be in core because core can still have the original game textures and the game will run just fine, right? It, there won't be a compatibility mismatch between clients just because uh, those textures are different. It's, it's still the same. It still works the same. And there's also another a disadvantage in having the original bugged textures. It just means that the visuals are not so nice, but functionality wise, it's still the same, right? So that's why 
textures can be an optional also some any changes some of these scripts can be an optional which we have done here audio of course as well same story as the textures uh, we have a bunch of uh, audio fixes actually a lot of audio fixes but also these things don't need to be in core uh, can be optional and this way we save a lot of megabytes in the core bundle pack right we don't need uh, don't need all this extra data in core when we can release a much smaller um, much smaller release for those players who really just want to be able to play be compatible with the rest of the players and everyone else who wants a full experience with all the fixes all the audio fixes all the art fixes everything they can get the optional bundle pack uh, with everything everything fixed right so that that's a deal here and yeah core is much smaller than the optional bundle i think that's not even close i think we can check uh, if we go here to build uh, raw bundle packs oh we can't see it right now here uh, but we can build it mm, we so right now we only have full english selected here but we can build core english as well so we select both and then we press build yeah now it needs to build a little bit here no oh, it's already done okay that's good so core english is ah we don't see any here because uh, it's symbolic links okay but it's okay we can build release that should put it into archives and then we should be able to see this so we go here release Okay, so core English in a zip file, zip archive is 10.3 megabytes. And the full English is 256 megabytes. So magnitudes, magnitudes larger. And yeah, so it makes sense. So players who really want the minimal experience, they will then just get the core small fast and easy transfer and they are the full with everything inside all the fixes much much larger already 253 i think it this will grow much much larger i think core will also grow a bit once we get to the model fixes and maybe even map fixes then yeah these need to be in the core okay but i expected core maybe maybe it will be 20 30 megabyte max i suspect but don't quote me on that I don't know we will see okay so uh, yeah so this is uh, the packs and then the the bundle items so that what this refers to like the core audio or optional any uh, this is defined here in those definitions where we say aha okay core audio Arabic and uh, it contains these things All right so here let's uh, open some core textures for example core textures we'll look into game files edited folder we'll find all tga textures and export them as dds and it will also look here into generate mip uh, folder for psd files and export them as dds same with tga and the tiff files export as dds and here's some extra manual ones and also with no mip maps also and then it will not generate textures with mips uh, it will generate textures without mips let's say like that and it can also generate tga files out of psd and tiff source files yeah and a similar with w3d files uh, it does have support for exporting blender files to w3d which works in principle but we have found that the exporter from blender to w3d is not quite there yet there's still error so in the long run we need to build a new tool to actually um, uh, we, we want to build a new tool and export 
W3D files to XML files and the, those XML files to W3D again. And then we want to edit those XML files by hand for things that we can fix by hand. So for example, if a certain mesh is referencing a wrong texture, then we can just edit that in the XML file, which is a plain text file. Uh, otherwise, if we need to modify meshes, right, and, and that won't be so easy to do with a text uh, edit, then we can uh, export those XML files to blend, blender file, and then modify it in, with the blend file and then export blend to to the XML again or export to W3D and from the W3D export the XML again probably this way because the Blender plugin only takes W3D but not XML I'm not sure maybe it does I think the the, the format is X3D called X3D for XML 3D yeah but which is also a Westwood format so this W3D is a Westwood game native format right it's not like shared with mm, with anything else it's like purely for westwood games such as generals zero hour uh, and the x3d with the xml is the same it's, it's still the westwood format but it's just in plain text with xml formatting yeah which it's better because we don't the w3d is um, a binary format and we don't want to uh, we don't want to have the binary format in, in in the Git repository if we can avoid it. Yeah, and ideally we do avoid it because yeah, it's hard to revision. Uh, it's impossible to revision binary files, right? Like you can't diff these things, and you can't see like okay, what did I actually change? No, it's just binary garbage, gibberish. Uh, yeah, so text files are always better if if we can get something to text yeah okay but yeah uh, that's beside the point um yeah those uh, bundle items they are called these are the the items inside the packs the bundle packs and yeah a bit different uh, bundle items core any contains all the any files and yeah all this is then presented here in this tool here are the bundle packs and then we can if we just click on execute here then it will build everything install it into the game directory and then it runs it and then we can test it right so this way the the build this way the build is uh, is always the same so everyone who's cloning the repository he has all the source files like the source texture source models source any files everything uh, he clicks here on on uh, execute or on build or so build release and it builds it and then the state should be the same on each client uh, depending on the revision that they pulled from the repository so main branch right now 12th of august and everyone who would get the same revision right now would build locally this way then they would have the same build and they could play and yeah everything would be identical yeah um obviously this is a developer workflow this is not how the final user interacts with this this is only just for the developers who build the new stuff for the game uh yeah to make sure that everything is built correctly from source because if we would do it by hand impossible impossible doing it by hand is absolute madness because it would mean every time we make a change to a source file we have to manually export it and then we have to save it into the correct folders uh, make sure that we don't forget it make sure that then we also put it into the big archives and everything and then for all these different languages and packs i mean just look at this so we go here to um, so so this dot build folder that's the intermediate uh, build files are in here so ev everything that uh, here was built for core english and 
full English. We didn't build the other things. So French, German, Italian, and so on. That is not built right now. We could do it if we select all these guys here, but right now, no, just a core English, core, uh, full English. And then what happens is it puts all the bundle item files here into these folders. So for example, here, the any files and uh, the, the textures being put in here, everything uh, processed. So everything is compiled to DDS textures as we have already seen. And then out of this, it will build uh, the big files. These are the game archives. So as you can see here, uh, one file for optional audio and core audio and core any and so on. And then out of this, it, it generates the final files that will be installed to the game directory. And then out of that, it will build the final release, which is a zip file right now. So as you can see here, all the release files are in here. So data cursor, we have one cursor in there, English readme changes is in there, and then the big files. Same for the full English with all the optional packs as well. And then obviously we could have different archives. So for Linux, we could have a tar file or we could also build an installer out of this automatically. So basically we just press one button and it, it we, we make changes to the source files. We press one button and it builds a new full release with everything so that nothing is missed. Everything is consistent. Everything is proper no errors in the distribution we didn't forget to add oh if french is missing this one file oh, you know that would be bad right if we do it all manually by hand this is a really bad idea so it all needs to be automated so just for testing i mean we can deselect these and then it will build everything but first we need to quit the game because what happens here is uh, what builder right now is waiting for is waiting for the application. It has this abort button here. So we press abort, it kills the game. And now we can press the buttons again. So let's let's press build release. And now what it will do is it will also build all the other languages. So here it starts with Arabic, Brazilian. This goes through all the audio files right now. So let's grind through all this. Hopefully, uh, uh, runs through without errors. Um, if there is an error, it will stop immediately. Actually, it will also have very early errors. So, mod builder will detect if there is an um, invalid setup before it actually starts building by doing a bunch of checks already, which is very helpful. So, for example, if uh, if a file to be saved in a specific folder is a duplicate, like if if we have if we have two source files and they both want to write to the same target file, that's an error, right? Because then, yeah, how is this supposed to work? We can only have one target file of that name, not two, right? Uh, or it references a file that no longer exists or never existed. That's also an error. Uh, there are more checks like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it finds an error, it, it stops very early. And then, yeah, it's easy to see like, okay, what's the problem? Fix it into the, in, a, in the JSON bundle items or bundle packs set up and then, yeah. Well, easy in quotes, but I think a developer who like gets into this, I think will understand yeah, for the most part. Okay. So it's still building here. Now it's building the bundle pack. So it's probably just sim linking now all the to all the big files and now what is it doing now now it's generating the zip files yeah. the core zip files mm -hmm. okay so this would take a bit here the bigger zip files okay so now what we have is uh, build so all, all the big files, these are now all the big files that are already in the, in super patch. 
So as you can see, a lot of these files are for the different languages. So here, as you can see, optional, this all 11 languages, this 11 languages, and here, and here, right? So yeah, a lot of la different languages. And then the others are shared between the languages because yeah, maps, textures, and so on is the same in all the languages. And yeah, these are all the raw bundle packs, core and full with all the languages and they yeah, contain the respective uh, bundle items with uh, the respective language. Yeah. Audio French, 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 French. Yeah, yeah this, this is how it works. Mm. Press one button, get everything built. And now we need to wait until until it's done generating all the zip files. There's also a button to clean everything. So press button and it nukes <laughs> everything that was generated. Uh, otherwise, mm, it does support incremental builds. So like if you build from scratch the first time, it, it takes much longer to build, right? Because it, it, uh, it, it builds the first time and it needs to build all the textures, all the models, everything from scratch but if you have already built once it knows what it has built it saves it the state and then it doesn't need to rebuild that again only the file that you've changed will then be rebuilt on the next build this makes a, um, a new build much much faster if you only have a small diff like let's say you edit an any file you click on build and it only needs to rebuild this any file and then the big file out of that where it's contained and then done, right? So it's much more efficient. Uh, also using the execute uh, sequence here, it doesn't do a build release. It doesn't build the zip files because that's not necessary to actually test it. And yeah, so now we build 270 seconds, everything is done and yeah, good. But yeah, we don't need uh, to build everything by default in this project. It starts with full English because yeah, that's, the default bundle pack to test with it's good enough yeah okay but what we want to do now is make change log and now that goes through all the yaml files and builds a new change log and then we can submit then we can submit the change log update yeah okay where is it probably at the bottom yeah so yeah, as you can see it added five changes here here with textures including the one that we just submitted today just now and yeah writes it here into this uh, markdown format yeah. okay so we can add this uh, update Mm, change lock plural maybe okay commit push push all right and and let's go here no that's wrong here put the documentation create pull requests and merge good so now the change look is up to date which is linked here at the um, in the first page there's a change logs version 1.0 work in progress and there we can click this is all changes sorted by date. And yeah, this contains a summary of all the changes that have been submitted so far, which are how many? 1,435 changes. <laughs> 
of which uh, over 1,000 fixes, 300 tweaks, 61 features, some refactor, some optimizations, and some sub-changes. Sub-changes just means like you have a bigger change and sub-changes like a, a little bit more details to that change. Like for example, we do with the textures, like one, the, the, the major change is the texture set was fixed and the sub change is okay, what exactly was changed on each individual texture. And yeah, this is just noted here as sub changes because it's not so important what is exactly in here. Yeah. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, stuff already changed. As you can see here, the list is pretty long. Very long. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, what I wanted to do is let me let me let me black out my screen real quick as I navigate to YouTube. Um, YouTube Studio. Yeah. Okay, let's put the screen back. Yeah, like this. Okay, uh, there were some comments here in in here on the last videos. Uh, so common. Ah, yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. I think uh, Sergeant Square Root was inquiring about the game, and I said I can give a bit of an overview of what we know is wrong and needs to be improved. Right. On Git uh, on GitHub, we have taken a lot of notes on the status quo, and we already fixed a ton of issues. Yeah. So. Just to give, like, uh, for everyone who's new to everything, uh, I think a video is a good opportunity to give a bit of an overview of the status quo of a game page project, so we can do that. Mm. So what do we have? Yeah, well, we already look at change log, so that's already a good start. So change log shows us everything that has been fixed and improved already, right? So the main focus for super page is to fix and improve game data. Game data includes uh, all the game specific logic. So how units behave, what the factions can build and uh, the, how the units behave, how the buildings behave, the timings of things, the damages, the armor values, all the stuff is all inside the any scripts they're called. Uh, all the expert models, they know this, of course, even probably noob models. <laughs> yeah, but for those unfamiliar, I try to be, um, try to be uh, explanatory. And then, of course, there is uh, all the art, right? The, the models, the game worlds, the maps, and uh, 2D art, uh, textures, and then, of course, the audio, or the unit voices the sound effects and the music and uh, what else is there? Uh, I think that's about, uh, the windows, uh, the GUI elements, how the different menus look and the in-game GUI that and the AI also the AI scripts, how what the AI does exactly when, uh, what they build and how they attack and stuff like this, how they behave. That's also uh, scripted a lot and yeah I think that is about it. and the language the language uh, files uh, like the, the the strings like what they read for the different languages that is also a part of game data um, yeah I think that's about it maps window yeah so yeah, and uh, all these different uh, things, they have issues. Mm. So of course, uh, the game scripts, AI has issues, 
art has issues, maps have issues, windows have issues or don't look nice or whatever, or uh, the, the, the language texts have issues, wrong descriptions, uh, missing uh, key bindings for units, actions, stuff like this, right? So a lot of things are wrong, can be fixed, improved, and that's what Super Patch focuses on, but only game data. The other part is a Thyme project from Assembly Armada. Thyme is uh, complementary to Super Patch, and that is just focusing on game code. Let's open the repository to, so we can actually see it here. Uh, that is my profile here. Thyme. So this is a repository for Thyme. This is all things game code. So this is actually the C++ code for the game client. Uh, the, the, the big difference here is uh, the game scripts, the any scripts, they are just like definition files of game content, like how units behave and stuff. Uh, but these scripts, they, they, they only cover so much. They, they can fix a bunch of critical issues here and there as well. But I would say the, the biggest bulk of issues is actually in game code. We are talking crashes, mismatches, connection problems, lags, a lot of this stuff is actually in the game code, in the executable. Game.dot or generals.exe, whatever it's called on uh, the game distribution. That's part of game client. And we are not talking about game backend, back, uh, game uh, server, just client. Client is peer to peer. So the client is able to connect in a network lobby to other clients and play. We don't need a backend for this backend. It's different story that is like what connects players with one another and allows chatting and adding buddies and stuff like this, hosting games. But the game client itself, that's, uh, I would say that's the most critical piece of fixing zero hour. Data is one story. Uh, data has a lot of nice to have things like polishing audio, polishing textures. All these things are nice to have. Then there are many things that need to be fixed that can cause crashes in game data and that are bad bugs and not good for gameplay and need to be fixed and approved but the absolute biggest chunk of offenders is here in the game client and this is what Thyme wants to provide to cater to create a one-to-one -one copy to the original game C++ and then once we have it, right now it's 50% complete, 52% complete. So there's still a long way to go. And the project is already seven years old. Um, so yeah, there's no telling how long it will still take, but it can take a, a few more years. But once it reaches standalone, then the floodgates are open to fix everything. And I mean everything, every bug in the game we can fix, every crash, every mismatch, every little uh, shitty bug we can fix. And that, at least for me, that for me is the most important. Fixing and polishing the game to be like a really stable, great experience of the original game. So it, it mainly will still function like the original. Maybe there will be some some gameplay changes here and there, like maybe this tank is a little bit stronger or this unit doesn't suck as much anymore, right? So things like this. But overall, the, the factions are the same, the units are the same, the buildings are the same, everything is the same. The game looks the same, but it's just everything works smooth. The performance is better, it's stable, it runs, you can run it for 500 days and it still runs perfectly beautifully, nice effects, everything looks good, no glitches, everything perfect. That's a goal for me. Then of course, afterwards, the uh, after this would be achieved, the next step would be to maybe add some new features here and there, some nice to haves, like, okay, we want to have new functionality in the lobby, cool new stuff to make it more exciting. Yeah, uh, there's, 
we did take some notes for things like this, but features, I would say, is secondary to the initial efforts, at least for me. I mean, someone else may see it differently, but personally, I see the biggest problems is really stability, bugs. It's absolute madness. And I mean, I can only say it's remarkable that despite all the problems that Zero Hour has, and I re it's, it's a shitload of problems, that there are still so many players playing it is remarkable. It really is. It really is. I mean, it is a great game if it works, <laughs> if it runs, if you can, if you actually first get it to run yeah, for the first time and then actually I uh, can keep using it and Windows Update doesn't destroy it, <laughs> yeah, then it's good. Yeah, But I think every player knows that eventually you cannot connect, you crash, you mismatch, there are bugs, units are glitching, things don't work uh, the way you would expect they work. And yeah, so problems are everywhere, but technically everything can be fixed. And we already fix a lot, which is great. So for example, let's see, what did we fix? Fixes critical issues that crashes all clients in a match. Great, that <laughs> already sounds good. Uh, fixes lags caused by Patriot, you say Patriot. Fix the wrong model of GLA battle bus and Bunker said, okay, that's not that big of a deal. Actually, we can also uh, sort by severity. Yeah, let's do this. So we have a change log where uh, all the changes are sorted by importance. So let's go with the important ones. But that looks weird. Why is this? Oh, anyway, let's go from the top. So China nuke missile exploit was fixed. Probably you didn't even know that the uh, China nuke missile has an exploit, but it does. Uh, fixes a Scud Storm exploit. You probably know the Scud Storm exploit, yeah. Uh, game crash. Fixes game crash upon the use of a GLA terrorist or demo general infantry units. Okay, there's a crash with terrorists. Uh, critical issue crashes all clients. You already saw this. Poten fixes potential unresponsive control bar buttons. Uh -huh. Okay, so there's a bug where you click on buttons on the control bar and nothing happens. This is fixed. Uh, fixes key conflicts in German localization. I'm not sure why this is marked as important. Let's see. Major. Okay, it's major. Yeah, so there are key conflicts, German, French, Spanish, Italian, Brazilian, Polish. And so there are not so many critical. These are the critical ones. Just five criticals we have fixed. Is that right? Yeah, just five critical bugs. So as you can see, there are some critical issues, but not so many. The, the biggest amount of criticals will be in time. The crashes and mismatches, all this stuff will outshine the fixes in super patch. Yeah. But basically the final goal is that super patch and thyme that they can bundle, right? Because they are uh, complementary, right? We can bundle thyme with super patch, merge them together, and then have one release where everything can be fixed. My expectation also is that thyme will become the base for pretty much every mod. That's my expectation. Maybe there will be some mods who don't want to use Thyme, but my expectation is if Thyme is done right and it works well and everything is well polished and we don't make mistakes, then I expect it will be the foundation for every other mod. So Shockwave, Rise of the Reds, uh, TEOD and all these mods, um, Contra mods, whatever, my expectation is that they are well advised to build on top of time because then they can actually really benefit from first all the fixes and then also add custom functionality that they eventually would like to use in their mod because the original game content is kind of restrictive and they have to find hacks to work around limitations and 
yeah, it's not so great. So it's probably good to be able to expand the feature set of the original game and then use that in the mod. And so my expectation is Thyme becomes a foundation for most mods. Thyme becomes certainly uh, complementary for Super Patch. And maybe if Super Patch is done right, then I think Super Patch plus Thyme can also be used as a foundation for new projects. So that new mods built on top of Thyme and Super Patch as a foundation, and then they build a custom logic on top of that, right? Because essentially Super Patch, the, the main intent is to polish everything that is an original game, right? And most mods do use original game content, right? They use like the, the, the vegetation and the houses and the original maps maybe and the UI and stuff like this, right? So if this is well polished, it's a great foundation and then they can put their, uh, their, their, their new modifications that is catered towards uh, new mods on top of that, right? Uh, add uh, new models, add new textures, uh, add new maps, uh, improve the GUI and everything, right? Uh, because the foundation is already well polished and then they benefit from all the polished things, all the, uh, the language uh, fixes and all the stuff, texture fixes, model fixes, and uh, logic fixes, uh, game logic, uh, everything. And then, yeah. They, then they don't need to fix all these things on their own because this is what usually happens right now. Uh, the mod uses original game as a foundation and then they fix all the problems that is in the original game to first get their, their mod up to speed and stable, right? So every mod is using a bug game as a foundation. That's a problem. Right? And, then, and then the same problems are solved over and over again by all these different mod creators. And some mods probably don't fix all the problems that are there. So that's why I think it's important to have a clean foundation, aka this project, what it attempts, that fixes all the biggest offenders, all the smaller problems, and is makes a nice foundation for every other project to just build on top of it that that's that's the main idea and then of course become also a standalone uh, project where uh, the zero hour players can play right so right now zero hour players play on the bugged original uh, game but ideally if we have like a polished fixed game then ideally players use that right because why use why use uh, the bug game when you have a polished game that essentially is the same thing, but just like stable, high performance and no bugs, everything nice and clean and polished, right? Then naturally players should gravitate to that, right? Unless they don't really give a shit and they, they, don't, they uh, got used to <laughs> all the problems in Zero Hour, right? Uh, which probably the leftover players are, right? I, I mean, the players who still play, they don't play the game for its bugs, but they play it despite its bugs and they just live with it. But I suspect that there are also many players over the years who said, I have enough now. This game is crashing too much, too much connection problems. I give it up. I switch to some game that... Uh, works better. I can just launch it, play 10 minutes, done, do something else, right? And this is hard to do in zero hour because it can be really frustrating to get rolling if you don't invest enough time to actually, to find a good match, a stable match, find a good host, right? Because there's just so many problems. Yeah, so that's a, that's a goal. That's a goal, make a great game and hopefully build a nice foundation. Honestly, honestly, this should have been done 20 years ago already. Th this kind of project. The project just, just fixes everything and stays true to the original experience. It right? doesn't change the faction. 
uh, GLA is the same, China is the same, USA is the same, all the units are the same. Um, yeah, so that it, you just have a nice, polished, clean version of the original with all the original features, everything nice. This is, I, I think this should have been created 20 years ago already. But the problem is, it's just so much work. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it is so, I, when I started the project, I had no idea. I looked at the zero hour and I thought, okay, there are some problems. We know, scut bug, you know, and crashes. Okay, we know. But the more, the more we look, the more problems we see. It's small things. You, you see one thing, you see the next thing, and another thing, and the new thing. And you keep on polishing, you keep on fixing, and then, ah, yeah, this makes sense. Oh, yeah, why was never like this? And many things you don't even see because you just take for granted in the game, right? Some bugs. Um, but yeah, when you, when you dig deep, you will find a lot of problems. And so far, I'm very happy with the progress, even though it has been three years now with Super Patch. Yeah, almost three years now. A lot of things were done, but there's still so much work left. Um, I think in the future I can make an overview of like what is done and what still needs to be done. I can put that on the front page. I thought about it just a few days ago. But yeah, let's uh, go a bit here through the list to see what is in there. So what did we do? Yeah, we fixed the localization, the key mapping. So basically a bunch of these uh, languages had uh, uh, a, a huge amount of key conflicts. Uh, English, English not, but uh, maybe it wasn't major, but yeah, German, French, Spanish, Italian, Brazilian, Polish had uh, major key conflicts. So uh, key conflict means you have, uh, yeah, you have a, you have your control set, dozer or unit or uh, building, and then a key is double mapped so you can't really you can't access the other thing with a key because only one key will work right and so this all had to be fixed for all the different languages um key mapping mismatches between faction unit variants in all languages mm -hmm. Fix the lags caused by user pattern. We already had that. Fix exploit that grants a significant amount of cash after building a USA supply drop zone. Ah, you probably know this bug. The supply drop zone exploit. That is fixed. Mm. Fix an issue that permanently reduces the power level of a player. That happens after you launch a new match and then <laughs> the power is uh, reduced lower than it should be. That is fixed. Uh, fix the USA Humvee without tow missile stopping moving after targeting air unit. Yeah, this sometimes happens. You move your Humvee and it stops moving on a tech move when it doesn't have the tow missile. Yeah, this is fixed. Uh, removes a composite armor bonus from non vanilla USA Avengers. Yeah, so uh, somehow. EA made a mistake with the Avengers and put the composite armor bonus on non-vanilla USA Avengers by mistake. And it's, it's not visible. You can't see it visually on the unit, but also not in the GUI. It doesn't show that it gets composite armor, but it does get composite armor for some reason. So that, that has been removed. Now, obviously, that also makes the USA Avenger weaker. But yeah, that's a different story. If Avenger is too weak, then that needs to be addressed in a different way. But it can't have composite armor uh, just because, yeah, it shouldn't. Uh, the, the USA supply drop zone cargo planes are no longer automatically attacked. Yeah, this happens like... Uh, in spam games, right? When all the cargo planes fly over the map and everything shoots on these cargo planes <laughs> automatically. You fly over the stingers and the quad cannons and the Gatling cannons and everything shoots on those uh, cargo planes. So this no longer happens. They can still be shot down, manually targeted, 
but they're no longer automatically attacked, which is great because it also uh, improves performance. It gets rid of these attack warnings. Yeah, it, it should make the game a much better experience as a USA player, but also as the others. Yeah, because it's it can be abysmal, right? When all these planes <laughs> fly and get shot at every time. Yeah. Yeah, then here's some... Actually, also some uh, changes. So we do change some stats of units when we see that uh, something, some unit is totally useless or some setup makes no sense. So for example, here, the USA Sentry Drone is almost never used in the original game, right? You see no pro player building Sentry Drone. It's expensive. It makes very little damage. It drives, it drives okay, but it has this lag when you target something. It takes a long time to retarget on another unit. Um, yeah, so what we did is make some improvements to the Sentry Drone so that it has better stats, less price, and then, yeah, that eventually it becomes more useful. That, that's the goal. Basically, make uh, weak units better so that they become more attractive to use and make things that are too strong a little bit weaker so that they can't be abused as much so for example for example the gamma scud storm is outrageously strong it's stronger than the demo scud storm the area damage is just outrageous and if you compare that with a nuke missile from china the nuke missile is horrendous. The Gamma Scud Storm, outrageously strong. A nuke missile from China, super weapon with six minute timer, very weak. Yeah, can't even kill uh, the GLA holes in the original game. And yeah, these are the opportunities where you say, okay, China nuke missile needs to become stronger. Gamma Scud Storm way too strong let's try to make it a little bit weaker so that the toxin general doesn't dominate as much as it does the toxin general very very strong is a gamma upgrade you know this yeah and all these things can be tweaked a little bit so that yeah things come a bit fairer uh, hopefully we'll see yeah all this is pretty much experimental i mean all these things are not set in stone i suspect that yeah when play when we come to play tests that players will say, oh, this is not good enough, oh, this is too strong now, this is too weak now, then we probably need to revisit some things. But the goal right now is to look at these things logically and say, okay, uh, if we push it into this direction, does it make more sense from a logical stance, right? Does the unit become more useful? Does this overpoweredness go away if we do X, Y, Z? Right, that, that's a goal here, because if we, like, even if we make mistakes, the goal is that eventually players play this and say, ah, oh, okay, it, this plays nice, or this plays not so nice, and we can try to identify, okay, which changes do work okay, which changes do not work, and then we can dial back, like, let's say, let's say the USA Sentry Drone is too strong now. Right, so here, sentry drone gun damage has been increased by 20% so that it's more in the range of a USA Humvee without veterancy, right? Uh, so, but maybe then players say, ah, no, sentry drone gun is super overpowered, 20%, yeah, too much. And then I can say, okay, maybe put it back to what it was originally or maybe 10% is enough, right? It can be revisited, right? So yeah, this is the... The goal here with those unit stat changes. Um, yeah, what else do we have here? Uh, fixes USA pilot not promoting the Humvee but taking passenger seat instead. Yeah, this is an annoying issue. So the, the Humvee is driving, you put the pilot on it uh, with a promotion, and the Humvee doesn't rank up, it goes into the passenger seat. So that is fixed. Uh, Fixes USA strategy center gun attack issues. Yeah, sometimes or very often the strategy center gun on bombardment doesn't shoot. This is fixed. Now it always shoots well. Um, increases armor of the USA Comanche by up to 23%. 
yeah this is again a controversial gameplay change um this is done because the usa comanche the non air force one is pretty bad it's very expensive it has very low armor it dies in no time against quads and rpgs and gatling cannons and stuff like this so armor was increased so it's not as bad on paper makes sense how it plays out we have to see usa fiction is quite strong yeah increases usa unit armor bonus for hold the line battle plan from 11 to 20 percent ah okay that's because hold the line is also very rarely used um and the bombardment gives 20 percent and uh, the uh, extra the what's the, the uh, uh, search and destroy also gives 20 percent i think so here we increase the unit armor bonus also by 20 percent which makes sense in comparison to the other bony yeah and yeah so let's see what else do we have here ah then there's also here this uh idle auto reloads yeah there are multiple of these uh, units that uh, shoot uh, self itself of uh, missiles rockets or something like this and uh, then then they don't auto reload so for example the usa comanche has a rocket port uh, ability right where you you select the ability in a command bar or the hotkey and then you click on a target and then it shoots and uh, eventually it's done shooting when you pull it away or you press stop right and then you would expect that the next time you shoot it shoots a full amount of missiles again but this is not always the case because it doesn't auto reload this uh, rockets so let's say you let's say it has 30 missiles and you shoot 29 of these then what happens is it only has one rocket left in its chamber and then you pull it away and then let's say after one minute you take something else then it will only shoot one rocket with the rocket pods one rocket and then it has to wait 30 seconds to reload and then shoot the next rocket and uh, yeah this is counterintuitive because the player doesn't really see this doesn't know this so what we've done is we've taken all these units where this is the case, which is here the USA Comanche, but also the Battle Master from Tank General, and uh, also the Double Cannon Marauder Tank, and some more. I think even Scud Storm, yeah. And um, now when they are idle for the natural duration of the reload or full reload, then they auto reload, right? So if it has one missile left in the chamber and then 30 seconds pass then it will reload every all the missiles yeah it's a little service <laughs> little service and yeah that should make it uh yeah, much uh, makes it makes it uh how do you say makes it more consistent with what a player would expect right okay what else do we have here Mm. Ah, here fixes China tank and nuke outpost being unable to properly attack buildings. Yeah, this is um, this is a problem. Uh, you click on the buildings and the outpost doesn't attack with the uh, tank hunters properly. So this now properly works. Improves the mobility of the China dozer. Yeah, we know this uh, drives really retarded. That's better now. Um, fixes the inability of the China nuke missile to destroy the GLA structures. Yeah, I already mentioned this. Uh, China, China nuke missile in the original game, the super weapon, is really bad because it leaves the GLA holes intact and then GLA just laughs at this and says, huh, I just wait a minute and then everything is rebuilt on its own without rebuilding it, without investing money. Yeah, it's bad for China, good for GLA. GLA sends one Scud Storm and the entire China base is gone. But China sends a nuke missile and GLA yeah, lost a few seconds here and there. But that's about it. Right? Uh, fixes China nuke cannon neutron shells exploit. 
Okay, I don't even recall what that is. Let's click on this. The China new can neutron shells can no longer be exploited. Okay, it looks like uh, we we did not really say exactly how this exploit works <laughs> to not give anyone an idea to uh, abuse this exploit. Yeah, so it's very generic, but there was an exploit. It was fixed. Good enough. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of changes. Fixes mismatching particle effects of GLA black market and fake markets. Yeah, this is very small detail, but it makes a difference. So particle effects of the fake market and the regular market are different, which means if someone like studies the way the particle effects look, then they can distinguish uh, they can tell apart uh, the markets. Then they say, ah, this is a fake market. This is not a fake market. And then it kind of it kind of destroys or it, it yeah it, it makes a fake market kind of useless because players will be able to tell oh it's a fake market because the particle effect looks different right so the, i think this is a pretty important fix for gameplay yeah because yeah if if a player is knows how to identify this particle effect he can tell apart the ma markets and then building fake market becomes absolutely useless right and then this means yeah no one builds fake markets anymore and this is unavailable pretty much right i mean it will, obviously it will still work against noobs right who don't have any clue but every pro who cares to learn the game would then be able to tell apart the markets and then yeah no point in building a fake markets which then in turn makes the game content less rich right because yeah okay yeah game complexity is higher because you need to learn this particle effect sure but once everyone has learned it then the fake market is useless right then yeah one less thing to build in the game and this is the same with all the these useless units right like the sentry drone no one builds a sentry drone is a useless unit uh, so and the game is poorer for it, right? If if sentry drone was useful, people would build it. Right? Same with a saboteur. Saboteur kind of useless, apart from yeah resetting uh, scud storms. Uh, well, saboteur is maybe not as useless as I make it sound. But uh, the non-stealth hijacker, this one, no one builds it because it it walks. It's visible, everyone can kill it in no time. So no one builds it. Only there was a stealth general because that hijacker is all the time stealthed. Yeah, so things like this. Uh, fixes random chain reaction kills of GLA toxin terrorists. Yeah, that's also an annoying issue. So sometimes you have like a, a blob of toxin terrorists and then you send it on against the building and then these die but sometimes a terrorist kills another toxin terrorist and it's not a hundred percent it's maybe 50 50 i don't know what the chances are but it depends on their proximity and the timing of when they die and then what happens is those killed toxin terrorists they don't apply the full damage anymore and then yeah you won't kill the building eventually right and this is yeah kind of random it's the the way that the players counteract this problem is they they spread the toxin terrorists apart before they attack something so when you see the technical driving around the building they evacuate the toxin terrorists with some spacing in between and then they attack the building and this way they can't the, the chain reaction can't kill the toxin, the nearby toxin terrorist. Yeah, it doesn't happen with the other GLA terrorists. It's just with toxin because, yeah, it has some bug, buggy setup. Yeah, this is fixed. Well, that's good. Yeah, well, I guess you can look through this list yourself. It's linked on the front page of the, um, 
of the uh, project. The link is in the video description here uh, of game page. And yeah, there's uh, a lot of these things, um, a lot of major issues, but not so many critical issues in game page. The most critical issues will be in time. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all the things that are done, but then of course we also still have a huge list of things that still need to be addressed. Um, and yeah, so 526 things right now in the issues list on our project. There are a lot of things that are for executable, which means that it would be for time. Actually, let's filter for these because these are the absolute worst executable. I wrote that wrong. Executable. Yeah, there we go. Oh, 225. <laughs> yeah. 225. Wow. That's a lot. So half, almost, uh, not half, uh, two, two fifths of the bucks here for executable. Wow. Okay. So unit movement destination is inaccurate. Yeah. This is. Is this a shortcut? <laughs> Very economical. We will move the goods. Is this a shortcut? Yeah, so the problem you see is the units don't move directly to the cursor. See, there's always a little bit of offset. See? So there's probably some rounding issue somewhere in code that makes the unit not move perfectly to where you clicked, but just a little bit besides. Yeah, this uh, it makes micromanagement of units a little bit more difficult. Uh, what else? New generals, power shortcuts. Yeah, this is a minor issue, who cares? Uh, units can teleport into USA Chinook after drop off over impassable terrain, okay. Under construction loop event can start multiple instances on the same scaffold. Yeah, also minor issues, some on, some audio issues. Bridges may unload after tapping out of game. Okay. Try drop only mismatch player from game session. Uh, this is an uh, enhancement. That, that would be a nice feature. So a player is mismatching, which can happen. Like for example, if the math is out of sync with the other clients, and then an enhancement would be, or if it's a malicious actor, like if he uses uh, something to change a money, money value on his client, for example, to cheat money, and then mismatches the whole game session. Uh, here, an improvement would be to just mismatch the, the offending player and let the other players continue play. Technically, this should be possible. Just drop this player, let the others play on. This would protect... Uh, the game session from malicious actors who try to mismatch. So I think this would be a very valuable feature, but needs time. Um, ambulance propaganda tower swallow emergency repair burst. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, implement feature to rotate buildings in angle step. Ah, yeah, this is uh, nice to have so that you can uh, more easily place them against uh, uh, rotated uh, supply stashes, supply docks. Uh, add feature to transfer cash to teammates. Yeah, I, th I don't know why we noted this, but yeah, maybe. Ah, it's for team games. Yeah, for teammate games. Where, uh, let's say you have a lot of income, but your teammate is struggling. Uh, maybe there can be a feature to transfer cash as an optional setting for, for a game. Opt in. And say, yeah, we want to be able to transfer cash, enhances team play. Yeah, why not? Mm. Okay, let's see some of these major and critical ones. Ah, okay, network has minimum latency of 10 frames, 333 milliseconds. This, this 
in my uh, as far as I'm aware, this is an artificial limit. This ten, fr this three hundred thirty-three milliseconds, aka ten frames, is an artificial limit in network game and online game. And I think we can dial this to zero frames, so that it can settle to lower frames than this. And this would make the game much more responsive. Like right now, you click and it takes at least three hundred thirty-three milliseconds until the action registers. But I think this can be lower. We can have much lower latencies in network and online. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have here? Original map transfer implementation and loading screen has design disadvantages. Ah, okay, that, uh, yeah, you transfer as you start a match and not before you start a match. So it probably would be good to be able to uh, transfer, transfer a map in the in the matchmaking lobby so that this can already be done and that the the, the map transfer doesn't fail the the whole game session yeah edge scrolling does not work in window mode yeah i think those people who use full screen know this uh window mode you know this uh, what else do we have here some other major or criticals here, initial super weapon countdown is incorrect if construction completed in subdued state. Uh huh, okay. Uh, game will crash if battle bus with rebels destroys nuke battle masters. <laughs> okay, so you have a battle bus, you put in rebels and you destroy nuke battle master, then the game crashes. <laughs> yeah, it was reported by Transistor. I I've never seen this. I've never seen this, but he found this. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a quite a interesting, um, quite interesting requirements. Uh, and you don't see this every game, so that's why it probably doesn't happen that often. Because you, first you don't put rebels, <laughs> you don't put rebels into a battle bus, right? And then you don't attack a, a battle master. Well, yeah, it crashes the game. So that needs fixing. Uh, what else do we have here? Ah, save camera and mouse movement, key presses and chats in multiplayer replay. That's also a feature request. Yeah, and it makes sense, right? Uh, it's, it's good for anti-cheat that you would be able to see, okay, what did the other player looked at? What key, keys did, did they press? And the chat is also good to like review, okay, what was actually said in the game. So yeah, this would be nice to have, like uh, expand the, the stuff that is dumped into the re replay, right? Uh, what else? Critical. Game can get stuck in disconnect screen. Okay. Ah, yeah, right. You have a disconnect, someone counts down, and then uh, it's stuck in a state and it just the countdown never finishes. I think every player who plays a bunch of matches has seen this. Well, I think, yes, yeah, someone starts counting down and comes back and then, yeah, the game is somehow stuck in disconnect. Yeah, this certainly is a big problem. Uh, LAN lobby list resets position occasionally. Yeah, this happens in network lobby, LAN lobby, yeah. Uh, when I think a game updates or something, there's like this list and then it's kind of short list and then it resets position and is bad for navigation. Yeah. Implement no rush feature. Okay. Okay, what else do we have here? Major. I only look at majors and criticals. Add team appware observer mode. Ah yeah, this makes sense because right now what happens if if you if you observe if you if, if you join a match as a player, two versus two, you surrender and then you can see the whole match you can see the enemies you can see your teammate and this means if you are in voice chat you can talk to your teammate and tell them exactly what the enemy does right so the the proper implementation for this would be that the surrendering teammate can only see his teammate his remaining teammates playing and then he sees a fog he cannot see the enemies and then he cannot uh, tell his teammates what is going on this is how how observer mode should properly work you know, to avoid cheating. 
Okay, units can shoot from inside regular USA Chinook. Ah, yeah, so like tanks and tomahawks. Ah, no, from regular USA Chinook. Let's see. Ah, that's a YouTube video. Okay. Yeah, I think I saw this. So you, yeah, there's a video and you can watch it if you like. Yeah. Implement faction handicap modifiers. Ah, yeah, this is interesting because. Uh, there's often the argument being made that the imbalance makes the game nice. That, let's dissect this. So uh, sometimes in the forums we get uh, the feedback that players uh, uh, like that uh, China is so weak and Air Force is so strong because then if, uh, if a weaker player gets the Air Force and the stronger player gets the China, then it will create an interesting match. Right? Because the weaker player has a better army, uh, and the weaker, uh, the stronger player has to struggle with a weak faction, right? And this is nice because it makes uh, this matchup then more balanced because the skill level is so different. But the problem is that the problem is that the, it it only works in certain scenarios. Like if it's the other way around, if the stronger player got the air force the weaker player got to China, then there is a double, the, then the less skilled player is at a double at disadvantage, right? It has a weaker faction and the worse skill, and then it's not that interesting anymore, right? So there's always two sides to the coin here. Uh, and and the, 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 the base assumption of a faction cannot be that they have inherent uh, major uh, differences in the ability to win a match. Every faction should be able to win a match somewhat comparably, comparable chances. So that when you have when you have ten thousand matches between players, that on average every faction wins about the same, right? Distribution. So that China wins fifty percent, USA wins fifty percent, GLA wins fifty percent. That would be the base assumption in a perfect world. Obviously, this is hard to achieve. Um, very likely there will be discrepancies. So maybe a faction is 55%, another is maybe 45%, right? But it shouldn't be it shouldn't be too far. It shouldn't be 70-30 or 90-10, right? That would be too much. Right? So I think the better approach to this to preserve this argument of we like to have uh, the better player with the uh, worse faction that there should be handicap modifiers so that you can say hey okay we want to give disadvantages to the better player or advantages to the worst player or worst team uh, so that it's a bit more balanced and everyone can have a little bit of fun but then let's add handicap modifiers so that we can say okay the weaker player starts with plus 10% armor on all his units, for example, right? Or plus 10% damage, right? So that he has an inherent advantage, regardless of the faction, right? And this way you can then say, okay, the better player doesn't get uh, advantage, weaker player gets um, advantage, nice, we see some better action here. Right? I think that's a much better way to to handle this issue try to make the factions similar in the ability to win the game and then add handicap modifiers to allow players to customize uh, the the factions to match the skill if they like to right I mean, the default is no handicap modifiers um, but yeah if players like handicaps make it a feature i think that's much better than adding handicaps to the factions without any possibility to change it. I think that's nonsense. It's bad design. I think it's really bad design, but I've seen this argument so often in the forums by players. Oh, it's so good that China is so weak. No, it's not. It's not. It's factually not good. It's, it's much better if China can compete with a GLA. It's much better. Or if USA can compete with Air Force, much better. It should not be an auto loss 
if Air Force fights against Super Weapon General. It, it makes no sense. Why, why should it be an auto loss? It's not good. Right. Okay, so what else do we have here? Add feature to mood mute player persistently in online network lobby game room and mesh ah yeah okay that's because so in uh, in the match you can mute a player but in 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 the lobbies matchmaking you cannot mute right so it would be no actually you can in the online lobby you can you can put you uh, people on ignore list that that works but a network lobby not and also the ignore list in online lobby does not carry over to actual game game state because these are disconnected systems the one is backend and the other is a peer to peer um, game and yeah these are disconnected yeah it would be nice if you put one player on ignore it's saved on the back end and it's restored in every match session it's consistent you cannot read what the player types done right so if someone is harassing another player it's a good idea to be able to mute them consistently yeah there's a feature yeah what do we have here the disabled binary shower particle effect causes a memory leak and eventual crash yeah this is a problem i think there's a nice video in this yeah yes here's a video <laughs> yeah so <laughs> you have the super hackers here they hack the building let's make it a bit larger yeah they hack the building and then it crashes because memory leak and yeah game over so there's a the particle effect has some problem leaks memory and then it crashes i didn't know this before this report it's very interesting because a hacker hacker is not used often to disable things actually never it's just just used to hack buildings but yeah the particle effect causes memory leak china hot bonus is not activated with garrison units in proximity ah yeah okay so this happens like you have rocket soldiers you put some of them into a bunker and uh, some others outside and then the, the hot bonus is not activated just because they are inside the garrison yeah this can lead to bugs like you load up a uh, a helix helicopter i have five units inside it should give the hot bonus but just because you didn't enter all of them in the blob but one by one and then they don't have the hot bonus if you entered all in one blob then they would have hot bonus yeah so it creates like these discrepancies uh yeah which make no sense so this would be nice to fix uh, china nationalism and patriotism apply fire rate bonus to units regardless of hot bonus Oh yeah, it's just like a blanket um, upgrade. It, in the description, it says it applies only to hot bonus, this, up, uh, this bonus, but in reality, it applies always, regardless of hot. Yeah. So it's a question like, do we want to fix this or not? It's controversial because it does change, like yeah, the power of the China tank hunter and some other units, battle masters. Network lobby does not update when game window is minimized. Yeah, yeah, D definitely in the online lobby, critical. Yeah. Audio is muted after resuming game that had been minimized to desktop. Yeah, I think uh, players know this if they use a full screen. The audio is gone and then you need to go to the options menu, click something and then uh, audio is eventually back. What else do we hear? Team player base explodes on disconnect team player base ah yeah T uh, team player loses connection and then his base explodes uh, but if he surrenders it it transfers to the other player right now the question is does this make sense or not why should a disconnecting player lose all his buildings it's it's, it's a bit of a design question but yeah, it also, yeah, maybe maybe this was intentional, but it's hard to justify this, especially because of Game Ranger, all the noobs they click the abort button, which yeah kills the game. Player disconnects, teammate is screwed over, loses 
access to all the team buildings. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have here? Major. Group force fire attack is gated by lowest ID group object weapon. What is that? Group force fire attack is gated by lowest ID group. This means a unit without a weapon can prevent the entire group from force firing targets. Easy to test by building a sentry drone first, then a Humvee, and force attack with both. Ah, okay. So you have a unit, it has no weapon, and just because it was built first and is selected in a group, then it means a whole group cannot be used in the selection to attack something. Yeah, it's an inconvenience. It's not... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a major issue. Because it, yeah, there's no reason it should be like this. It, it just is a way. And yeah, players know this and yeah, they can deal with it, but yeah, it's not convenient. Right? Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, GLA rocket buggy can't damage reinforce and pet from maximum distance. Yeah. Some projectiles do not collide with allied buildings. Mm -hmm. Do I have a video there? The rear fix is to not have them shoot until clear sights. Let me see this video here. Ah, uh-huh. Okay, so so the the overlord starts shooting <laughs> even when he doesn't have clear sight and now damages the propaganda center. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes no sense. Like, so why is a tank starting to shoot <laughs> into the building uh, when he only should shoot here? And he's still shooting here over the corner and still damages it. Yeah, it looks like there's some logic problem here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have here? Mm. China hackers stop hacking inside internet center when pressing stop key. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't press stop on the internet center. Critical. Replay menu looks broken when a replay with missing map file is listed. Replay menu looks broken when you're... yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. You have a you have a replay, you don't have the map for it, and then the replay list is totally bonkers. Is there an image for this? No, no image. Yeah, but you probably have seen it. If you download it, uh, replay from somewhere, you don't have the map, boom. Replay this is broken. Occasionally, one or multiple players load very slow into match, even when their connection is okay. Yeah, that's a bug. Critical bug. Controls input does not always work straight away when returning from Windows Alt Plus Club. Yeah, sometimes this happens. Uh... Game UI is expensive, a performance concern, yeah. Game cursors, unit health bar, and similar UI elements do not scale well in high resolutions. Yeah, there's a problem when you go to 4K, for example, then, yeah, all the health bars, everything will be super small here. You see this, right? So, it doesn't scale. I mean, it looks great. The, the visuals look great but yeah the text doesn't scale here the health bars don't scale the numbers very very tiny it's probably too tiny yeah not good yeah, that needs fixing yeah game text does not scale well yeah i already measured uh, mentioned that bmp screenshot taken with f12 can stall the game yeah we know this Pressing Alt key in windowed mode stops the game update. Yeah, that's also a bug. Not a big deal. Well, it's major, yeah. Game does not capture cursor in windowed mode. Yeah, that's true. Only Gen tool adds it. Mm, changing resolution in options menu will reset IP address to first in list. Yeah, that's also a bug. Team assignments are not synced, but team selections are... Uh, team assignments are net synced, but 
team selections are not which can be problematic yeah because ah yeah because it it uh it's it can be exploited in ways which i don't want to go in detail but a gen tool does fix it and yeah it only makes sense to fix this in time as well units and buildings can be grouped together by using the shift key features ah yeah this is a problem also for exploiting Game client lags significantly when AI units try to find waypoints on large maps. Yeah, this is a big problem on Twilight Frame, for example. AI wants to send some units, waypoints, everything blocks down, 2 FPS, everything's slow, game's unplayable, everyone cries. Yeah. And I try to upgrade the computer, it still lags. Yeah. <laughs> okay, game crash on application shutdown on browser engine. Okay, yeah. Game crashes on full screen launch if game creation resolution is not supported by the graphics adapter. Yeah, this I have observed at some point when messing with some settings. Probably an easy fix. Just change resolution on launch if it doesn't, it's not supported or something like this. Game crashes on launch when EDL static game log setting is missing from options. Yeah, this. It's a problem in original game, but it was actually fixed in the latest Steam update. Yeah, Thompson's 26 did fix it for Steam update. The game crashes on launch with latest AMD drivers plus debug help. That yeah, yeah, so debug help needs to be deleted. The gen patcher does it, deletes this file, and then this problem is gone. Low energy production speed cannot be controlled perfection, and the GLA power spam is overpowered. Yeah, this is a problem. So. GLA, if it if it gets hands on the power plant from China or USA, then the production will be uh, doubled. And then yeah, GLA has insane production. All the buildings can be constructed in half the time. All the units, and there's no way where, that this can be fine tuned. There's no the, for fiction. So there's there's a setting low energy production speed. Uh, but that's for all factions and yeah we cannot tweak this for GLA so it would be nice to be able to control this power spam for, just for GLA and then tweak this if necessary there's some memory corruptions here yeah memory corruption is always bad leads to crashes heat haze effect causes the screen to render black on some hardware configurations yeah if you are affected you probably have seen this that's why it's often disabled users in the options menu china propaganda bonus resets weapon reload oh this is an interesting issue yeah uh it's not just a propaganda bonus it's all bonuses that change the reload time or the the firing rate the firing yeah the firing rate if that is changed on the weapon then the weapon reload is reset the weapon is reloaded immediately and this can be exploited uh, in certain scenarios oh yeah is, this needs to be fixed that's the problem mm, units will lock onto enemy units in fog when using guard mode yeah that's a bug game provides no information on exe or any checksums ah, okay the yeah, yeah, let's not care about it. Yeah, it's something. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about this. Uh, W3D files have no CRC check, but can cause mismatches. Yeah, that's a problem needs to be addressed. Uh, th this, uh, this problem for mods mainly. Yeah, also for original games. So, uh, yeah, if there's a small discrepancy, can cause sneaky mismatches yeah it's hard to detect and yeah this needs to become more robust so that the uh, that the game state is validated against checksums and that it that it's that it's clear like what kind of version is someone using and is it really compatible with this remote client who's also running a game right we want to be sure before we start a match are we actually really compatible yes or no right now 
maybe <laughs> maybe we are compatible let's try let's uh, run a match let's see if we are compatible oh mismatch okay guess we are not <laughs> right this is how it is in zero hour for the most part uh, i think online lobby does have um does have additional CRC checksums for the for the uh, rooms that you open, but network lobby does not have this at all. So you can you, you can install shockwave mod and uh, contra mod, and then have two clients join the same room and try to match, and then they load in, and then of course it won't work, but uh, they can try. Yeah. So yeah, this is is, is really error prone the way it's currently handed needs to be improved games goal speeds do not scale well with viewport aspect ratio camera pitch yeah gentle tries gentle actually does addresses uh, in some ways uh, game crashes when moving units yeah there's a crash when moving a lot of units game crashes when uh, oh there's two of these maybe it's a duplicate I'm not sure Maybe it's two different movement box. Yeah. Uh, some important files are not included in any CRC check. Yeah, that's what I just mentioned. Network game room hangs of eight players with long nicknames join. Yeah, you're probably aware of this from watching streams when you see uh, the players coming with short names. If they come with long names in the network lobby, it definitely leads to bugs because there's a buffer overrun. Uh, the long players they cause the buffer to be overrun yeah uh, camera height does not scale properly along with aspect ratio of game resolution yeah this is uh, the camera is too far zoomed in when using widescreen gentle does address it game crashes when exiting replay mode while player plays as a beacon yeah gentle also fixes this game can crash when clicking on player icon in replay mode yeah this is Bug Gentool does fix this as well. Observer cannot use chat functionality. Yeah. Gentool does uh, fix that or unlock that. Game control bar cannot be toggled in replay modes. Yeah. Gentool also unlocks that. Options menu lists resolutions of 4x3 only. Yeah. Gentool also addresses that. Mm, game can mismatch after transferring a multiplayer map containing a map.ini file. Yeah, that's uh, that's a problem. Yeah, connection does not establish to other players for no apparent reason. Yeah, yeah, you load into a match, doesn't connect to other player, and you don't really know why. And then maybe you try it again with the same player, same configuration, and then it works. Yeah, this this is unacceptable. That must be fixed. Map transfer fails for no apparent reason. Same same story. Same story. Uh, what else? Add option to reveal random armies for game room UI. Yeah. Yeah. Game doesn't support IPv6 natively. Yeah, th I think this is a big problem. I mean, back in the day, everyone used IPv4. Then it was okay. But now many clients will have IPv6 exclusive connections. And then they cannot use the game natively. They need to use uh a, a private a virtual private network game ranger or uh redman or other kind of networks that have like a, a virtual network and then it would be compatible with ipv6 it would be great if the game natively supports that game rooms in network lobby are not gated by executable and any CSC. i already mentioned that yeah that's a problem. Killing transport unit with passengers inside does not grant XP for the passenger kills. This is interesting. So if you have a Humvee and you have five rocket soldiers inside and you kill that Humvee with all these rocket soldiers inside, you do not get the experience points for these rocket soldiers, just for the Humvee. You kill the Humvee, get lousy experience points, and those rocket soldiers inside don't give you experience, which Obviously, it's hard then when you yeah, face those Humvees or other units. Infantry, uh, infantry auto pops on outpost. Uh, it's Humvee. Humvee mostly. What else? Uh, ambulance. Uh, any other? Chinook. Helix. Yeah. Battle bus. Uh, yeah, this. 
Technical evacuates on death. Uh, outpost as well. Yeah. Uh, not always. I think outpost. It, it damages uh, passengers 50%, right? So it can kill passengers on death. Okay. You guys cannot enter a guard mode China Helix. Yeah, you put the Helix on guard mode and then you cannot enter it. That's weird. Uh, multiplayer match can mismatch if Saboteur was used to disable power plant in previous match. Yeah. That's certainly not nice. Unidirectional map waypoints can cause AI to mismatch. Yeah. Stealth units and buildings are de undetectable while in the disabled state. Yeah. So you have stealth units. Let's look at this. You have disabled units and then you cannot see them. Yeah. So you see here, there's some stealth unit or building here. The sentry drone is next to it, but it cannot see it. it cannot uh, reveal this stealth thing. Hmm. Okay, what else do we have here? USA Chinox will discard move commands shortly after construction from USA Supply Center. Yeah, so you build a command, you build a supply center with USA or any other faction, and then you send the Chinook somewhere, but it doesn't go there. Instead, it then wants to collect. Yeah. So there, there's a timing issue. You need to do it after it has flown up and moved a bit, and then you can command it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's annoying. It's annoying. Tank projectiles cause mismatch. Okay. That, I, I think I looked into that already. Uh, this is mainly an issue for mods that use uh, fast weapon speeds, fast weapon speeds. And so I tested, I tested all the weapons that are, that use a dump projectile behavior here. And uh, yeah, that's really the name in, in game. Uh, I tested all of these and none of these caused mismatch in original game. So it's mainly an issue for mods. It's a bug, but just for mods and yeah, but needs to be fixed in time. Yeah. Okay. What else? Last page. GLA tunnel contents can be killed by shooting on tunnel scaffold with stealth fighter, bunker buster, new cannon, neutron. Yeah. So yeah, you have scaffold. Is there a video on this? No, just notes. Yeah, you shoot, uh, you have a tunnel scaffold, you shoot on it with a neutron cannon, and that clears the tunnel. Uh, makes no sense. Suddenly a bug needs to be fixed. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have here? Use a drop zone, grants more money when money crate falls on different home building? Question mark. <laughs> Yeah, I think it happens when money falls on two buildings and then it's collected twice, something like this. Yeah. Uh, collecting scrap with GLA German care will make snipe ability reset or dysfunctional. Interesting. Dysfunctional. Reported by Mad Rage. I don't know about the dysfunctional thing, but yeah, uh, reload makes sense. Uh, game crashes on Alt plus Tab. Yeah, we know this bug. Infantry can move into structures and capture from inside. Uh -huh. The game crashes when a certain 3D shadow limit is exceeded. Yeah, that's a problem. If you want to avoid this kind of crash, don't build too many units or disable 3D shadows in the options menu. Uh, game mismatches in team game when player surrenders and owns a base structure that has been cleared of infantry before. Yeah, so you have a team game, you have a, you have a structure, a faction structure, you put in rocket soldiers, you evacuate the rocket soldiers, then you surrender, then the game mismatches. Yeah, 
uh, that certainly is a very bad bug needs to be fixed and this is only the the kind of mismatch we know there are probably a lot of mismatches that we don't know the reason for so this will be something that we need to investigate once we can probably won't be easy i'm not i don't even know how yet this can be debugged but yeah we need to probably add a lot of logging or something like this under certain conditions china dragon tank can shoot on bunker but does not clear its occupants yeah that's problem yeah so as you can see yeah uh, just by this what we've looked at certainly there are big problems need to be fixed addressed and these are just the things that are tracked here in the game page project there are also more problems uh, tracked here in thyme so i'm also busy here with tracking issues uh, so yeah sa same sorry problems maybe not uh, like uh, problems that are so much v uh, visible to the player but problems that are certainly in code so i i try to like take notes whenever i see something uh, that is not quite right so vanilla bug for example unsafe casting in add entry function memory leak in add entry then i noted here right so these are things that you don't necessarily see in game, right? But when you look, when you read the codes, then you can find these things. Or if you have like debug tools that help you identify these problems. Uh, null dereference in this function here. That's a yeah, bug, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of bugs that refer to Thyme, but also a lot of things to do here for the super patch yeah okay how long did we record already two hours 11 minutes do we take a break now mm. Mm. Right, we have submitted the uh, texture set I showed you a bunch of things. Mm. What I what I wanted to actually look at today, maybe we can do this real quick. I don't know how long it would take. I wanted to um, I wanted to look into issue in this tool regarding camera movement. So when I when I press left mouse button and right mouse button, then I can go up and down here, which is good. So I move a mouse up and it goes up. I move the mouse down and it goes down. But when I move my mouse to the left, then the camera goes to the right. And if I move it to the right, it goes to the left. So this is really annoying to use because yeah, it's the opposite direction. It's wrong. So I wanted to see like if I can find in code where this happens and then maybe we can fix it. Uh, uh, but before we do that, maybe we take a look at the comments. Yeah, so I uh, hope uh, Sergeant Square Root that gave some nice overview, but he did say that he already looked, so he probably already knows all of this. Yeah. Packerman. Uh, Packerman had a bunch of comments here. Ah, he 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 did write a comment today or yesterday. Uh, I disagree with how you handle mod assets and how you handle the modding community. Uh, yeah, I know what he means. I don't want to go into too much detail about this because yeah, it's a big topic. So basically, um, basically, some mod creators made the accusation that in in general's game page, super page, uh, that we would steal assets from uh, other mods. Um, but this is not true. There is currently, as far as I'm aware, no asset from other mods in super page. If there was, then it would be a mistake, but I'm not aware. And I added most of the changes to the project. Um, there what is true is that we did look at uh we, we did look at 
uh, work, other work from other uh, projects to see like what they did to improve things, right? And then there was the idea, okay, maybe maybe we can um, use some of the things that have already been done to avoid redoing the same thing. Um, but in the end, we, d we never really went ahead. So there were some experimentations with, hey, yeah, let's add this and let's see how it looks, how it works. And so there was some testing in this regard, but nothing ever went through to actual main branch. So it's not, it's not in there. Nothing is in there. Um, the main problem is that all these third party assets and changes, they have no license, right? And that, that's one thing, they have no license. So yeah, the, the copyright owner does not allow you to use it. But the other part is that a lot of these uh, works from other mods, they are not really usable um, as like a final, uh, final work. So you can't just take it and then expect that everything is now fixed. Uh, from what I've seen is they fix some things here and there, but there's still a lot of stuff wrong. So they fit, maybe they, they take a model, fix 20% of issues they have found, but then you left over with 80% of problems still left in there. So, uh, yeah, it, it does not help then, right? So there's no much benefit in taking this, using this. Um, so there's two things, license and uh, not that great of a pick to use, right? Uh, plus there's an, it's, since uh, all these changes that mods make are undocumented, we don't know what else has changed. If we, if we author our own changes for our project, then we know exactly what we have changed. And that's why we are so detailed with our documentations here. This, all these, like, for one texture, I take all the notes of what I've changed uh, so that I can go back and can tell exactly what I've touched. I have an overview of exactly what was changed. And I can evaluate just from text. I can say, okay, this change makes sense or not. But if you have like a, if, if you take a model and you don't really know what has changed, then you first have to figure out, okay, what was actually changed, right? So you would have to compare it with the original, go through, everything and see okay what is what is different right and maybe they changed something that you don't want to have changed maybe they added something because they thought it's cool but it's it shouldn't be there right they added some new functionality some new feature or yeah maybe it goes beyond of what a fix should be right or what do you think it should be and then yeah from that perspective, it's also not, not usable, right? So yeah, so basically th that, that is the story behind this. And then basically um, some mod creators were unhappy and then, yeah, they left our Discord server and then, yeah, they said that we steal assets, models, whatever, things from mods, but it never happened. We looked at things, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, uh, it's not a good situation for us because yeah, it puts like a bad name, but yeah, it's unsubstantiated. It's, it's not true. That's, that's all I can say. But I mean, this is how, how things in the internet are. Like people can make the wildest claims and someone can choose uh, to believe it or not. But at the end of the day, I would say, don't take anyone's word for anything. Don't take my word for it, for that matter. Uh, go verify yourself, right? That, that's, a, that's the best way to go about this. And the thing is, all the work we do is 100%, well, not 100, but mostly transparent. Like we do have a private Discord server where we uh, chat about some things, but core communication and all the changes are here on on the github repository which 
you find linked in the video description and all the state is there so everyone can look at what is in there can download it can run it everything is here there's commit history there is a full change log of everything we have touched uh, so if someone makes a claim go ahead prove it check it whatever uh, there's nothing to hide it's from my side it's all proper if someone takes an issue okay whatever yeah it's it's not a great situation if someone makes claims and it's not true um but yeah i i can understand like it's it's a good way to discredit or to let off some steam you just you just discredit the person or their work or whatever and then you just and like lying is easy like disrespecting discrediting someone is always easy um and it happens everywhere in every walk of life it happens like if you make a if you make a man or woman mad about something then they will try to get some revenge and uh come up with something and maybe invent some horrendous story <laughs> and put you in hot water. Yeah. And then, yeah, some people may believe it. Some others won't. Yeah. It's, yeah, it can be bad. It can be not so bad. I think for this matter, yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but yeah, I, I can, I can see where Pekka man is coming from here with, his comments but yeah from my side no harm is done everything is proper and yeah I do all the changes most of the changes I think I think the let's take a look here at uh, uh, insights commits it's loading uh, no it's contributors yeah so as you can see here these are the contributors to to super patch repository so I currently have 1115 commits added to this commit two three seven four commits and in black that's Hanfield also a lot Stubiax also has some and yeah and from all the art changes and stuff like this i have authored the majority of these and you know all these are self-made and we have the the license as long as ea grants us the license to to build on top of their assets because yeah the the, the assets that we touch are not originally hours right so uh, they're part of the original game original models and textures and maps and scripts and all this stuff language files right but ea does grant uh, permission and license to be able to use these everything apart from music music we are not allowed to do anything with but everything else that is part of the game we have license to edit and so what we do is we edit this we improve it fix it and then we we do retain this license and move it forward so that that users that other users can also use our work and build on top of that and in return we expect that whatever they do with it grant the same permissions to the next person so and, and this creates a model where everyone is allowed to build on top of the work of the other person. So if we if we have a super patch and Thyme, Thyme is the same deal. It's also open source with permissive license. So everyone who builds on top of Thyme and super patch is allowed to do this. They can make all the edits they want. They can distribute it. They can do yeah. They can use it. They can distribute it, modify it, and but they must retain this license. They cannot then say, oh, we, 
benefited from all these changes here, but we keep it all private and no, you cannot use it anymore. You cannot uh, modify it. That's not how it works. The, the license must carry forward. That's what we have in our license and our terms. And so everyone is allowed to use it, but everyone must be able to enjoy the same freedoms, the same license. And but what this does is it creates a community where everyone can build on top of everyone else work. And I think this is the best way that, that the, the content evolves into an ever better state. The way it is right now in the modern community, in zero hour community, is everyone is doing their own thing. Everyone is building their own small pieces and release it and then it's there and that's it. So no one can pick up the work from someone else, make an improvement unless they are given a revocable uh, license for it by, by text or something. Uh, but that, unless, unless they get this, they cannot uh, change this. Uh, cannot sh I'm losing my uh, brain of thought here. Uh, my thought of my, I'm losing my brain right now. The brain is, is really hot here. Yeah. So please excuse me. My train of thought. That's what I want to say. I'm losing my train of thought here. So, so typically when uh, people release their third party content, uh, without license then no one is allowed to uh to to modify it to work on top of it and that that creates that creates content that cannot evolve it, it so so they release a mod and then it's there to decay it it, it can never get better it's just there the advantage with what we do with super patch and thyme and everything around this, everyone can pick this up, make their modifications, make it better. And then everyone can take the best changes from everywhere and make it ever better, 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 better. Everyone can come together, collectively work on this, make their own respins, uh, make their own version of it. And then let, let's say, Let's say here in Super Patch, we see someone else makes a fork of Super Patch and they create some epic changes for it on top. And then we say, hey, we also want this. And then we can also take the changes and put them back here into Super Patch, right? So things like this will be possible when you have like a really per permissive license uh, at the root of your projects. And uh, this is not the case in, in Zero Hour Community. Everyone is doing their own thing. Um, yeah, and the result of this is that the content will not evolve. It, it won't become, you, you will never have a, 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 a mod that is perfectly fine, error free. Uh, everyone adds great stuff to it. It won't happen. It won't happen. Because, because they, can't, they can't collaborate properly. They run into license issues and someone is mad yeah it won't work it won't work and also you cannot you cannot trust people that they will honor like a, 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 a verbal license or something like this it doesn't work so so for example we had this case where we worked together with the with the author of one mod and they went in a similar direction of like fixing game and making improvements and stuff like this. We said, hey, maybe you can borrow some of their work because they did some fixes, improvements here and there. And I said, yeah, it's okay. You can do this. Uh, just uh, credit. Just just credit me for uh, when, when you take it, right? Uh, so that, that was the agreement, the initial agreement. But then that person got upset because... They got upset for whatever reasons. Uh, and then they said, yeah, now you can no longer use it. That That's it. I, I revoke that license or that permission I gave you earlier. I revoke it. You cannot use it anymore. And this is, this is a problem. Like you, you cannot trust anyone to give you 
some permissions to anything. Either you release your content with a license or you don't. That's it. If you don't release it with a license, no one can take it. The, that's a, the that's a story. And then it's also and it's useless. Then it's only for users to pick up and use and then hope for the best that the users like it. But users cannot modify it. Users cannot re-release any improvements to it. The project is dead, basically. If the original author decides to go away, the project is dead. But Super Patch and Thyme, they will never die because they have permissive licenses. So anyone can pick up. So let's say I die. I walk across a road and the truck kills me tomorrow. <laughs> well, let's, that's pretty dark. Yeah? Uh, let, uh, let, let's not hope, but let's say, yeah, I'm gone. But that means that still someone can fork the project and can continue the effort uh, because everyone is allowed to do this. Everyone is allowed to modify and continue work on this. Yeah. So, and I think this is how community should have been organized since forever. But it's not like this. I think this is unfortunate. I think this is really unfortunate. And I would like to see that the uh, community gets more liberal and that that, uh, the, that the projects can borrow improvement from each other and they can share assets and ideas and implementations and... Yeah, that that uh, yeah that 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 uh, projects don't need to reinvent the wheel every time, and uh, that you can have spin-offs of projects, so that there can be flavors of certain uh, releases. An example for this is Control Bar Pro. In case you don't know, um, Control Bar Pro. Let's go to gentool.net. Uh, ah, it's not. Uh, it's not really linked here. Control Bar Pro is here. Ah, actually no. Let's go to the repository. It's also here. Uh, control Bar. Control Bar. Yeah, control by HD, observer and pro is here on the repository and our license is MIT license, which is a very permissive license. It means you can edit it, redistribute it, you can even sell it if you like to. If someone would pay for this, why not? So you can you can well you cannot really sell it because that's actually against EA terms, but you can ask for donations. You can ask for donations. Yeah. Uh, EA does have terms. You are not allowed to sell stuff that is built for a game on with with their titles. You're not allowed to do that. But you can ask for donations. Yeah. So here, uh, Control Bar Pro, you probably know this add-on. It's uh, quite popular. Do we have some sample images here? Yeah, here. Uh, yeah, this one here, Control Bar Pro. And this one is released with a permissive license. It means everyone can go ahead, edit it, make their own spin-offs. And this is what has been done. A lot of people have taken it, have created their own editions with different colors, different shapes. Uh, it was also used for different mods. Uh, I think um, Contra mod has an own version. TOD has an own version. M don't quote me on this, but I've seen different mods use it, make their own spin-offs. And I think this is the way it should be. People take an add-on or a mod and they improve it. Then they make a new release and then the users have more choice. They can take this and that and this and that. Yeah, I think the the negative of this is maybe, okay, the author says, okay, now we have so many different versions of something that maybe it becomes too cluttered. Yeah, I think this is a valid argument. The only that I can think of. So, so let's say you have a mod 
and you update a new version and then someone has a fork of that mod and also update uh, also releases a new version and now you have the players split uh, between those two versions so the, the player population is cut in half one player will like this more about this edition and the other player more about the other edition and then yeah they play different branches of the same thing essentially this certainly is a downside um yeah this i don't know how to solve this problem actually there are there there are ideas to mitigate problems like this in the future uh, it, it is a problem for status quo zero hour how do you install mods and how you run network uh, how you match make it, it is a problem right now but i think in the future if we can have better matchmaking where you launch a zero hour and then you see you see different rooms for different game versions in a in a lobby and then when you click on it 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 asks you to download it this mod and then you can jump straight into a room of a mod that you don't have uh, then this would be mitigated in a way right so so let's say you have mod you have mod x and you have two revisions uh, two different uh, revisions of it that are kind of similar but maintained by two different authors both are released uh they they show up as different versions obviously they are different but uh, the users in the matchmaking lobby they can see rooms for both of these titles they can see that there is a diff in the name and the hash version number and stuff like this uh, but when when they want to join the room they are prompted hey you would like to download this you, you're not running this right now downloads it maybe it has to restart the game maybe not maybe we can implement hot loading and then you jump straight into this version and it just works and if it's similar to the other version in principle then i think players can also more easily make the switch from one version to another so for example for super patch maybe someone makes a super super patch <laughs> just as an example and then so we have original super patch which is then maintained by the super hackers that's uh, here our, our our team name the super hackers so we maintain super page base but then let's say someone says okay i want to have a spin-off uh, make my own patch and then player can choose okay we want to play original super page or the spin-off right and maybe there's some differences but then if it's opaque to the user that they can see yeah okay i just want to join this room i don't care much if the version is slightly different as long as i can join this room here and it's about the same about the same then i'm fine and i think this is the way it should be that is just that versions are just very easy to discover to join and uh, yeah that you don't have this friction between versions right so everyone can author great versions new spin-offs, modifications, and players can discover and join this with ease without any manual file editing and uh, copying and yeah, complications and then run into trouble, troubles, mismatches. All this needs to be solved and then I think this will work very smoothly. Yeah. And then I also don't see much of a problem with uh, like having multiple versions of one mod. Uh, if you have like a nice tool that that shows you the different revisions of uh, 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 different versions of original work, then that's fine. So, for example, we have a super patch uh, created by the super hackers, and then a super patch project X created by the dude one two three, yeah. A spin-off and then uh, that, that should be fine right players will gravitate to the thing that they like the most um, if someone makes a spin-off that is better than ours then that means we can learn from what they did better and uh, yeah player population will choose whatever is best that that's my belief um, they won't stick around the thing that is worse 
um, so so someone should not fight like innovation. I think we should embrace it. If someone comes along, makes it better, and it's great. Obviously, I think the best case is if every sign everyone works on like the same repository and you know merges try, tries to combine the effort into one. I think that's that's the best case. But there can also be forks. And then things can be back integrated from a fog into the original world. Right? So I think it's okay. But yeah, ideal case is everyone works together on one branch, one version. Um, so in this case, I invite anyone to come along and contribute to Super Patch if they like to. There certainly is no shortage of work if you care to discover work. There's a lot of reports already here in this list. A lot of things can be picked up. I suspect it's probably not so easy to pick up work when um, when you're not so familiar with game modding. But I think everyone who kind of shares the vision of stable game, bug-free game, he will be able to get through this and identify things that uh, he can fix and uh, yeah for me it was also a learning curve i had no idea at when i started a project i thought it would be easy peasy walk in the park but the longer i spent time with it uh, the more i identified the more problems and the more work i discovered and now yeah a lot of work has been done commit two also I really appreciate that he has uh, done a lot of nice fixes for for a lot of issues. So it's nice. Stubjax has also created nice uh, improvements and fixes. And Hanfield helped out at the start of the project a lot with, uh, uh, with some of the early changes. So that was also good. No. And also uh, Jundi and uh, Exile and MT King for also uh, provided a lot of uh, assistance with uh, ideas and uh, decisions, and that is also very useful. Yeah. So yeah, it, it would be nice to like have more collaboration, but it's it's yeah i think the main problem is really it, it takes so much time to do great work it's really time if, if if someone has no time then yeah this can't be done uh, for me i i really like modding zero hour now i mean i always i mean i've been now in community for 20 years or so right so I started, the first things I did for Zero Hour was videos, videos, obviously playing first, <laughs> playing just matches, then videos, some streams, then I did Gentool for a very long time, Gentool, which is popular, add-on, uh, then yeah, I did still videos, live streams, then I did the Control Bar Pro together with FAS. And that was also a very successful um, project. Also, it didn't take so long to create, but yeah, it was really nice. It was very pleasant to work with FAS on this one. And yeah, since three years now, working here on Super Patch, various tools, and also trying to help with uh, a Thyme project. But with Thyme, I'm mostly... Uh, reliant on the work of Johnville and Thompson's 26 and Omniblade because these guys are much, much better at reverse engineering the original code. Uh, so I, I focus on the things that I can do with ease, which is code reviews, anything in C++, uh, testing, SIME. Yeah, these are the, th the three main things that I do for that project. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm loaded with work. Uh, super patch is a lot of work to do. Sime is a lot of work to do. Uh, I will have to do new tools um, with W3D in the future, probably. 
the game text compiler will need some more care uh, in the future. But yeah, right now I focus on fixing the textures. I want to get that done. And it's a, it's a big chunk. It's a big chunk of work that took a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. How much uh, are we into the stream? Two hours 44. Oh boy. Yeah, what I wanted to do is I wanted to check the... Um, maybe we can do this real quickly or maybe we do it in the next video. Uh, let's see. But basically what I showed before, the, the movement. So now I move the mouse to the right side and the camera moves to the left. I, this I would like to fix. Okay, where, where can we start? It must be in W3D. By the way, I hope uh, that you take some value here from what I show you. Um, now this takes some extra time here with the video now to sh show you around, but I think it's worth it if, uh, if, if, if it helps onboard some people who maybe want to help a bit here and there. And all these things that I do here, it's not black, black magic. Well, maybe, well, maybe he would ignore the code stuff. For this, you need more knowledge. But the texture work and the audio fixing and the script fixing, this is not black magic. This, of course, this is another story. With the code here, this requires more expertise. But yeah, don't worry about that. Okay, but we want to fix this problem. W3D view, let's try to find i don't know where it could be we must see maybe um what could we search for maybe maybe search for camera camera class i don't know Maybe, maybe, W3D, view does have, you does use camera class. Okay, that's not bad. That's a starting point. Let's search for this. Set camera transform. That could be. Yeah, what we can do is, what we can do is to see if that is responsible for the movement, we can comment this out. So this code set transform will not uh, be executed now. And then we see if we can still move the camera. And if we cannot, then it means Okay, it doesn't move the camera at all. Yeah, okay. So this certainly is very critical, but it means that this is this is uh, we are going here in the right direction. Now we need to find like where do we update this set camera transform. Uh, scroll maybe this maybe this function scroll by how about we put a return here so that this function doesn't do anything execute Load an object. Uh, it 
doesn't show anything. Let's double check. We first have to figure out where we want to. Oh. Okay, so it looks like this. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's do it once more. Turn. Okay, there we go. But I can still move, so it's not that. It's not this function. It's not this function. Okay. Then must be something else. Let's see where this is called. Set angle, set pitch. Maybe it's updates. Maybe it's here, this one. Uh, it's, it's try and error. I, I can't, from code, I can't really tell where this movement would be coming from. Okay, it's also not that. Force redraw. Wait, before we do this, let's go into set camera transform and put a return and double check that this actually. Okay, so this set camera transform doesn't do anything. <laughs> uh, okay, that was unexpected. Okay, okay, how about uh, we continue this investigation in the next video, fresh? Because I, I, I am kind of tired now. It was a three hour session, <laughs> yeah. But I hope uh, you learned something. Maybe you even enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I showed a lot of things. And next video, we can try to fix this problem. But first, we need to identify where exactly the camera transform happens. Yeah, I would have thought it would be set camera transform, but apparently not. <laughs> uh, but okay. All right, then, yeah, I wish you a great day. And until next time.